Let's consider one more quantum cryptographic protocol developed by Polish and then British scientist Arthur Conrad Eckert in 1991. The protocol is often referred as E91 protocol, again by the first letter of the name of its inventor and the year of invention. The first question you might ask is, if we already have one perfect cryptographic protocol, why to invent another one? Well, there's always a space for improvement. Eckert's scheme looks much simpler. However, it requires the possibility to create pairs of entangled photons. And it has a better flexibility by moving some of the work of key creation to the third party. But let's see everything for ourselves. In BB84 protocol, Alice had to do a lot of work concerning the key creation. She had to generate two random sequences of a rather big length. In E91 protocol, Alice can still take the key creation for herself, but she also can delegate this boring task to a third party. The main advantage of E91 is that Alice does not even have to trust this third party. She, among with Bob, can always check if there was an intrusion. Let's denote this third party by letter C, meaning by it the key creation center. This could be, for example, a commercial company which makes money on the service of key creation. And of course, if, which is very mad that she could not overhear Alice's secrets in the previous time, now infiltrates this key creation center and works as its employee. So Alice calls this key creation center and tells that she wants a key shared with Bob and the length of the key must be, say, 2000 bits. For each bit, C creates a pair of entangled photons in the state 00 plus 11. One of these photons then goes to Bob and another to Alice. The wonderful property of these Bell states uh, is when Alice and Bob measure their photons in the 0, 01 buzzes, they both have the same result. And this result that they have is completely random, so even the key creation center does not know it. So to generate these 2000 random bits, C must create 2000 entangled pairs and send them to A and B. It is as simple as that. But we must not underestimate Eve. Now when she works in the key creation center, she of course wants to intrude. The situation when Alice and Bob have an entangled pair for each bit is not good for her because in this case she would not know their measurement result and thus the random bit. So if decides to cheat, instead of the entangled state 00 plus 11, she randomly prepares states 00 or y11 for each bit and then sends photons to Alice and Bob. So they still would have the same result for each measurement, but Eve would know it, since she prepared it. How can Alice and Bob detect this attack? Very simple. Each time they both get their photons, they agree about the measurement basis. With the probability one half, they both choose either the zero one basis or the Adamar basis for each photon pair. And for this agreement, they can use any insecure channel, like a telephone line, for example. If the state received by Alice and Bob is indeed entangled, then in Adamar basis it is just plus plus, plus minus minus. And when Alice and Bob both measure the state in the Adamar basis, they both obtain the same result. But if Alice and Bob receive the state 0, 0, for example, then in the Adamar basis they will each have plus, plus, minus, and the probability for them to obtain the same res uh, measurement result becomes just one half. So after Alice and Bob received 
and measured the 2000 bits, they can randomly choose some of them and check if they are equal. The more bits they check and remove from the shared key, the more confidence they obtain. If some bit appears to be different in Alice's and Bob's key, then they detect if and they may decide to change the key creation center. Or they uh, can call the customer support of this center and report the problem. But if even 20 random bits appear to be equal, they can be 99% sure that there was no intrusion and they have a perfect shared key nobody else has. Okay, finally we reached the end of this course. At the beginning I promised you less formulas than in my other course on quantum computing. I believe I kept my promise. So those of you who was not terrified by the math you met here, you may want to take the course The Introduction to Quantum Computing. There you will study much more complicated and interesting algorithms. But those who believe that math here was just enough, or even more than enough, you may still want to take that another course, but don't do this very seriously. Just watch some videos, omit proofs and formulas, and don't concentrate too much on exercises. This may help you understand more. Which reminds me that I also promised more understanding in the name of the course. And of course, I can't be completely sure about you, my listeners, but as for me, I understood more than ever in my life about this subject when I tried to explain all this to you. So at least for me, this course was helpful and enjoyable. And I honestly hope that it was just the same for you. Well, I wish you happy learning and I welcome you to the other courses of St. Petersburg State University. Bye.